Well, hello everybody. Welcome to PBM Money. Today, I want to talk about something that occurred to me that is going to be a game changer for us. Now, if you've followed me for any amount of time, you know that we are always playing a financial game of some type so that we can be engaged in our finances and achieve goals. You don't, you don't achieve things by not engaging, staying engaged, and constantly trying to improve your game. So our game has been for this year and next year was to save enough money to buy our duplex at the end of next year. And we are ahead of goal right now, okay? So that has nothing to do with how we're changing it. I had a conversation with a banker about a year ago, and I was telling him about our little rental house that the ministry has, and he said something that kind of stuck with me. He said, when you go to apply for a loan, we don't count the income from that house. We count the debt, but we don't count the income. And I, and I asked him, I said, well, why? Back in the day when I, was, when I was investing in real estate, they didn't take all of it, but they took 80% of what you had a lease for. They counted 80% of that as income, counting on a 20% vacancy rate. Made perfectly good sense to me. And he told me, this banker told me, we don't do that anymore. You, on your own, with your income, need to pay for all of your real estate debt. Okay, that's going to be a problem. I mean, I don't owe that much on the house, but I don't make a lot of money. Add a duplex on top of that, and there is no possible way we're going to be able to do that especially at my age, because shortly after I buy the duplex, I plan on retiring. So, that was the game changer. How do we get around that? We're going to pay the house off. Now, we're going to have to put off getting our duplex by one year. And here's how we're going to do it. Each year in December for the next three years, we're going to pay off a large chunk of what we saved that year. So this is now uh, August 1st. We will, on in December, either the end of December or 1st of January, I will write a check for $10,000 to the bank and I have that applied strictly to principal. Now it just so happens that I did have the foresight to make sure that there's no prepayment penalty on that loan. So I can have that applied directly to principal. Then next year we will continue our savings cycle which we're going to need to save around $15,000. Okay? Which if everything goes fine, we can do. So next December, we'll write a check for $15,000. Then the next year, we're going to do two things. We will pay off the house and be looking for our duplex. If there's no debt on that little house, they will count the income. So, Pay off the house, get our duplex two and a half years from now, instead of buy our duplex in one and a half years and still have the debt on the house. It postpones it for a year, but I think it pretty much assures that we'll be able to qualify for a loan on a duplex. <clears throat> and I got to be honest with you, as I look at the market right now, the real estate market, Unless something drastic happens, I think the market is still going to be jacked up next year. I, 
even if we kept the game the same, I don't see uh, I don't see the market coming back like it was very quickly. So, but given two years, I can see the market softening up, inventory coming back, interest rates going up, and getting back to somewhat of a normal market. But in the near term, I don't see that. So this is going to work to our advantage. Yeah, we're going to have to put off the duplex for a year. But you know what? I didn't want to have to deal with tenants anyway. I was buying the duplex for me, for when I retire. So in three years, I will just now be turning 65. Okay. So we're still good. Uh, we will still have enough time. If we need to add on to get more savings, we can do that. We'll have plenty of time. We have enough right now. If everything we save for the next two and a half years goes towards that little house, we'll have time and money to buy our duplex. I have a feeling what's going to happen is that we'll pay the little house off and then we'll spend another year saving some more money and using the income from that little house to help us save because uh, the income from that little house will be 50% more than what I'm able to save right now. So in one year we'll be able to jack up our savings pretty good. So here's what I've concluded. The rules for investing change based on your age. Let me give you an example. The best way to save in the stock market is buy and hold. That's how you will make the most money long term. You don't, tell, you don't time the market, you dollar cost average, you buy it, you hold it, you forget it, and uh, wait 20 years. Let compounding interest do its, do its thing, let the economy do its thing, and in 20 or 30 years you will have made 7 to 8 percent on your money. And that's, that is the sound logic, that is good advice, and that's the way you should. The problem is, what if you're investing at 60 or 65 or 70? You don't have 20 or 30 or 40 years to wait for compounding to happen. You have to do, look at it differently. Now, does that mean you sell just for the interest in bonds? Maybe. Or if you're planning on a certain purchase, maybe you need to take your money, just put it in a plain old savings account, sacrifice the interest for short term so that you can make your real estate investment for the long term. The mindset is completely different. And I'll give you the example of what I've concluded on real estate. My whole life, and I've been in real estate off and on my whole life, the key phrase here is OPM, other people's money. That's how, that's how wealth is built in real estate. You know, the, the millennials now that have their uh, investment programs on the internet, on YouTube, they're giving you good advice, you know go out, even if you can pay cash for your house, you put 20% down, you borrow the rest because it's basically free money. If, if the real estate market goes up 5% a year and you're paying 3% on your money, that's free money. That's good sound advice. You borrow it at three, you're making five plus the tax write-off, plus the cash flow, plus the depreciation, blah, blah, blah. That is a great way to do it. But if you're 60, 70, and you, you owe debt on a house, and then you go to buy another piece of property, using other people's money at that point is not a good thing because that debt will be held against you. And when you retire, now you have to retire two debts instead of one. And bankers are not stupid, they understand that. So the older you get, the less debt you need to have so that you can borrow money to make money. 
we're still going to use the bank's money but in order to get the bank's money we can't have any debt on our end we have to find a way to get rid of that debt I have found as we play these financial games on this channel that that logic holds true with every type of investment. The good sound advice that we are taught, that we experience, and that we learn in our 20s, 30s, 40s is not necessarily the best logic there is when you're in your 50s, 60s, and 70s. And if you don't believe me, go to your uh, uh, go to your office where you make your investment through your 401k or Roth or whatever it is, and ask them if they don't have a three-tier system for investment. And they will tell you we have an aggressive portfolio, a medium portfolio, and a very conservative portfolio. And then ask them, well, what determines which portfolio I should be in? And they will tell you your age. When you're young, you go aggressive. When you're middle age, you go in the middle. And when you are near retirement, you go conservative. It's the same with debt. It's the same with investment. It's the same with stocks. It's the same with just about every investment I can think of. So our new game, starting now, is this December, I'm going to write a check for t at least $10,000 to put towards our house. The total debt on that house is around $45,000. So we're going to put $10,000 down in December. Next year, fifteen. dollars Next year, fifteen, dollars And hopefully along the way, we'll be able to pick up a couple thousand here and there. So that by the time two and a half years gets here, it'll be uh, $45,000. By the way, one of the benefits of doing this is in December when I do that, uh, my PMI insurance is going to come off. And I don't know how much that is, probably $40, $50 a month on that loan. So, but anyway, it's been a game changer. We're changing the game. We're going to be more aggressive than ever before but instead of sticking it and saving it and then spending it at the end of next year we're going to save it and apply it towards our debt for an additional year and we may even take another year to just to ramp up our savings before we go get our duplex I don't know it's really going to kind of depend on what the market looks like if the real estate market is a, is a buyer's market, we'll just go next year, or two years. But if it's still a buyer's market or a neutral market, we'll probably take another year, save some more money, and then go. But uh, anyway, when I remembered that conversation, and I realized we had to, that that conversation was a game changer, and we were going to have to change our financial game midstream, I knew I had to get on here, I knew I had to share it, and I want you to think about applying that logic towards your specific needs. Are you getting ready to retire? Get rid of as much debt as you can, including investment debt. If you've got stocks you bought on margin, get rid of the margin. If you owe money on your car and it's not going to be paid off by the time you're retired, work on that. That's what we're learning with these financial games. And I learned a big lesson here. Fortunately, it didn't take me two and a half years to figure it out. I would have been really disappointed if I'd have gone through the year and a half and still owed $40,000 and now I can't get my duplex because I've got too much debt. So the benefits of playing financial games on this channel just paid off again. Well, you guys have a great day, you have a great week, and happy investing.